Welcome back to Fuzz Lab. Today I'd like to talk about using a multimeter. Uh, if you're going to be getting into building pedals or basic electronics and you don't have a multimeter, you're going to need one. So this video is for people that don't have a meter. Maybe you have one and you're just not exactly sure on how to use it, what some of the settings are, and you can learn the hard way. <laughs> so I advise you to watch this video if you don't know how to measure current or if you're having problems with your meter. Now, when you're going to buy a meter, you want to, you know, want to, don't want to waste any of your money. Um, you want to make sure that it's going to be able to measure voltage, resistance, continuity, and current. Some of the other features that are available is the diode test, capacitor test, and HFE or gain. Now, let's say you bought 10 transistors, same transistors, and you tested them for HFE or gain. Gain is like the volume, maximum volume at this point component is going to raise in the circuit. You tested all 10 of those same transistors, you find that they were all different. Some are a little stronger than others, so it's nice to have the HFE tester. The meter that I bought, it didn't have it on there, but at the time I wasn't building paddles, I didn't know about it. Actually, when I started doing this stuff, this is my first meter that I had. It's an analog meter, and it has a, <clears throat> a little needle that swings over, the VU meter in there, and it's also not auto-ranging. You may have one of these in your garage left over from your great-grandpa. Uh, this is not really good for anything. The auto-ranging, you've got to adjust at the settings, and, you know, it's difficult to use. So we're not going to be dealing with those today. This model is the next one I got from Radio Shack. It eats uh, batteries. It uses the little CR2025 button battery. The cables break in here, not a lot of features, and it's expensive. So. If you see this, I mean, if you have a bunch of meters and you need a small one, this is great, but keep in mind. Now, what I ended up getting, I've had this one for years. I paid $17.50 for it at Walmart. It's an Equus 3320, and it has voltage, current, resistance, continuity, and the diode test. The test probe leads are detachable, so I bought an extra set and soldered some alligator clips on for hands-free use. That's important too. I mean, if you're going to be using it all the time, the cables, the wire's going to break. So, the ones that are hardwired in, eh, it's a little bit more of a hassle, you know. In any event, I'm real happy with this meter. It runs off of two AA batteries, and it la they last forever in here. And it does have all the features, the diode test too. It doesn't have the HFE. So, I ended up going to Menards. I saw they had this cheap one for seven bucks. Not really auto ranging, you've got to adjust it. But I'm only going to use it for the HFE test. These are they have these for five online, and this model is called the DT830B. So I'm going to go ahead and change camera angles, and we'll get into exactly how you use one of these suckers. Okay, so for the first test, we're going to try out some DC voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and set the meter to DC, and you can see the meter is jumping around. It's giving little ghost readings. I guess there's a little bit of electricity in the air tonight. First off is a 9 volt battery. We we'll go ahead and hit it on there and we can see, okay, yeah, 8.53 volts. This is also useful, this test mode is useful for determining polarity or which side would be the negative and which side's the positive. So if you don't know, you just put them on there any which way. And now you can see that a little negative symbol has come up over here on this side of the meter. That's telling me that, okay, properly you'll see the negative is gone. So that's telling me that in this configuration I'm showing reverse polarity. So it's helpful for determining polarity. Like let's say you have an AC adapter and you don't, it's not labeled. So you go, okay, well, yeah, well, they used to make them when I was a kid. They were positive polarity. So let's put the, oh, no, okay, it's a new one, negative polarity. The center, the red, is minus, actually. So if you're going to get a true reading without the minus symbol, put it on there and then there's no minus, so you know, that's the true polarity. The center of this plug is negative and the outer part would be positive. Now here's a 6 volt battery. I just ordered this for the emergency lights in our building. Oh yeah, they didn't rip me off. Cool. 
Okay, next up, I'm going to set it to the AC setting. And I got my probes here. I'm going to go ahead and stick them into the wall socket. So let's see what... No! No, just kidding. Okay, I got it in there. And you can see it's uh, 122 volts coming out of this outlet. Now, the reason I did that really lame joke was uh, you don't want to... <laughs> got to be careful when you're playing around with AC, okay guys? Don't like touch them together or hold it like that or start drooling on it or be drinking or standing on it. Better yet, don't even mess with AC. Let's just stick to DC for now, okay kids? <laughs> now I'm going to use the meter to measure resistance. So I'll go ahead and set the dial to the ohm symbol. Uh, that's the omega icon. And I've got a speaker that's labeled 4 ohms here. Now, polarity isn't important at this point. I don't know if you can tell, but I've got it hooked up backwards. This is the positive connector here, and I've got the black lead on there. So it's going to take a second for the charge to build up through the coil and give me a stable reading of 5 ohms. Just the ohm symbol. There's no K or no M, and we will get to that in a second. Now I have here... This is an old Telecaster pickup, a stock Tele pickup, I believe, that someone gave to me. And that's going to all amount, oh, look at here, a little K popped up. Now that's important. This isn't 7.44 ohms, it's 7.4 kilo ohms, which is like, kilo is like a thousand, I think. I mean, I'm not really a drug dealer, but they do have an M which is like mega ohm instead of kilo. And the mega ohm, I think that's like 10,000. It's a bigger category of, you know, a lot more resistance. Now here we have, I don't know where I got this thing out of my eyelash curler. The big giant thing, and oh, look at that. It's only 8 ohms. Just the ohm symbols popping up. So it's important for us to remember to check for our K's and our M's or if it's just an ohm. Now here I used this resistor before in a project. It's a metal film resistor. Uh, and we're looking at 10K. Yeah, it's right on. So that's how you measure. This is a resistor, you know, that you're going to be more familiar with working with something like that. Now here I have a pot. I'm going to connect these. This is like if you're going to, you know, you take a part of grandma's old black and white television set. And you want to make a fuzz box. You're going to use the pot out of it. Well, you can you can measure that because you don't really you don't know what the value is by connecting the leads to one and three. Don't connect anything to the middle one. In between one and three is a semicircle of resistant material. It's a strip of like semiconductor. The second pin here, there's a wiper that's connected to the shaft. So when I turn, you can see when I turn this knob, I'm not it's not affecting my resistance at all because I'm just going through that band. Now if I were to connect to the second one, and you see there, yeah, I got, that's the full resistance of the unit. Now I turn it all the way down, and it's showing, it's just cutting up two ohms, nothing out of the signal. So you remember, for checking a pot value, it's lugs one and three, and the polarity does not matter. Now I showed you before how we use the multimeter to determine resistance. Um, in this circuit here, uh, it's probably kind of hard for you to see, but I do have a resistor here. Um, uh, you really don't want to go in here while the part is connected to the circuit for checking a resistor because it's connected to all these other components. It's not going to give you a true reading. You really need to pull one of the lugs out or desolder the whole thing if you're going to try to figure out what the... And honestly, if you can see, they have these color bands on here. You can just type it into an internet search and that will tell you the actual value of the resistor. Um, but you just... The point is, you don't want to test a resistor while it's installed to the circuit. It's not going to give you a true reading. 